Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another Spy Hunter repair video. If you've been watching us work through this thing, it's very complicated, but we're getting further and further along. So if you haven't seen the first video or the second video or the third video, all of those are linked below, but um, we've basically been systematically working through this old Bally Spy Hunter upright arcade game, and we're almost done with it. Now, when we last left off, we were having a problem with the soundboard. And so basically, we weren't getting any sound out of our left speaker. And I was I had narrowed it down to, I thought it was the audio amp. So on the uh, actual board, we had ordered new audio amps, and we went ahead and soldered those in whenever, we, whenever they came in. And it did not fix the problem. So after looking and looking and looking and looking and looking and looking and looking, what we discovered was that the top connector had a pin on the white and red wire, which is the left speaker, that would not work. So basically, uh, uh, the, the wire was not connected to the board. It looked like it was, and it everything tested good, but after we got out the multimeter and tracked it down, there was a bad connection right there. So. Our problem was we were only getting sound out of the right side, so I'm going to hit the test button on this uh, Cheap Squeak Deluxe board, which is the one that makes the Peter Gunn theme sound song, and we should get sound out of both speakers now. Well, if I can get sound, let me turn up the volume. <laughs> So that is beautiful sound out of both speakers. I'm going to hit it one more time just because everybody loves it. So there's a test button you can hit on your cheap squeak. Fantastic. All right, so we got the uh, we got the sound coming out of both speakers, uh, and so the other thing that we were having was about half of the actual sounds didn't work. So you would think that that would be because the left speaker wasn't working. So we're going to go to channel test. The reason that cursor is moving like that it says uh, you uh, position cursor using the smoke and oil thumb buttons. Now, if you look, the smoke screen light is on. This button is stuck. <laughs> so. I, it wasn't like that originally, but now it is. If you unplug the controls, the button's no longer stuck. So it's something inside of the handle, I believe. But that button is stuck. So you're supposed to hit the weapons button to do one of the tests. So I have a new little game now where I have to hit it at just the right time. So we're going to go into that channel test there. So that's what you want. Sound on all channels. So we'll go back out of that. And now we're going to go to the actual sound test here. So it plays the Peter Gunn theme song um, just to show you that that's working. I'm going to turn that down so that we can hear the other sounds. And so it's going to test all of these sounds if I stop it on all sounds up there at the top. It'll run through all of them. coin, extra bass, tilt, bomb falling, explosion, car crash, shotgun fire, car off the road, stalled engine, machine guns, oil slick, smoke screen, tire chirp, tire slasher, Helicopter fade in, helicopter, helicopter fade out, helicopter crash, tugboat, missile launch, car splash, car spin out, bullet ricochet, torpedo. All right, so all of the sounds are working. So we'll exit this. Okay, so now we're going to go to player input. 
So this is the t this is we're testing the switches and everything. So and by the way, all this stuff I didn't have to do anything to repair it. To to fix the sound, all I did was replace that connector. So we wasted a bunch of money on uh, audio amps that we didn't need. Um, but you can see up there where it says steering wheel. It's to the left one point. If you move it, now you're to the left eight. If you go to the other way, you're to the right eight. Now you see the smoke screen light is on and the smoke screen. You'll notice when I move it to the right, that comes on and off. See the light is coming on and off. So basically there's some kind of short in the wire or a rub, a bare spot in the wire so that whenever it's turning, it's shorting that together. But you see the smoke screen light is on. Now if we hit weapons van, both of those lights work. If we hit uh, oil slick, both of those work. If we hit machine gun, both of those work. And on this side. So everything's working except the smoke screen is stuck on. I can't remember how you test the missiles one. Um, and then also, you see up there it says gear shift high, gear shift low. And then finally, the gas pedal. Goes from zero to one C. So, in other words, everything is working great except for that smoke screen being stuck on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this handle apart and get in there and see if I can figure it out. Well, I'm going to look behind it and see if I see a bad wire and if I don't, I'm going to take this handle apart and see what's going on inside of it. Um, and then I believe that will be all of the electronic stuff and we can start doing all the cosmetic stuff. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll check that out a little bit and see if we can get that last little thing fixed and uh, then we'll do some cosmetic stuff. So we took the handle off and when we did, it started coming on and off, on and off, on and off. And then whenever it came apart, we noticed that the wire was disconnected. So um, I think this is actually the ground wire. And I think it was kind of hanging on by a thread and reaching over. And... Let's see if I can get it to touch just where it goes and see if it doesn't go crazy. Yeah. So if I touch it on just where it goes, everything's fine. All right, so basically that just needs to be resoldered where it goes. So uh, we'll break out the soldering iron, take care of that, and then put that all back on and blah, blah, blah. We may actually, um, hmm. I'm wondering if we should take this off so we can paint this better. Might have to look into that, folks. So I may have to take this off and this off so that we get down to just this chunk that we can repaint red like it's supposed to be. And then I'd have to take this side off too, but that's not too big of a deal. So we'll probably disassemble a little bit more of it so that we can actually do our red paint that we need. All right, so we are nice and red. So now we're gonna put all the stuff back, and put these back down and we can start putting our handles back together. The main problem was the side or the side art was all ripped up so what we've done we've started working on it um, so what we've done is we we peeled off cut off all of the white that was around the artwork um, it was just a, like a solid like that and we've primered it with a white that's too light so we're gonna go get a little bit darker a little more uh, off-white shade to try to match the faded art on the bottom there we would just replace the whole thing but this stuff's some complicated stuff it's it's screen printed and then this middle part it was uh, offset print I believe is what they call it um, this part of it so they don't make a great reproduction in my opinion uh, so we're trying to save what we've got so we've got to repaint all of this the correct shade and then there's some striping that goes all the way around it that we're gonna have to paint by hand uh, we've also got the other side, the same thing is going on. But we've got one good coat on it. We also did a little bit of Bondo work on it where it was cut up a little bit. So uh, that's kind of where we're starting. 
and uh, we'll film through every time we get a little something done which should take a little while it's probably gonna take a few days but um, once we get the correct shade of white on it or cream or off-white or whatever you want to call that um, once we get this looking a little more like the bottom I'm going to hand paint a lot of the stripes and stuff that are missing so we'll see how that goes so uh, we'll be back whenever we get to paint a little more cream okay so we redid the white we got a white that matched a little better but then we just went ahead and painted the bottom white as well because it looked pretty faded so we got it looking nice and white but because of that some of our borders gone so it actually stops right there originally but this black part it kind of does like the bottom the black part keeps going around just real thin and then this gray part this double gray line goes up the back and stops up here um, just like it does on the bottom so you see on the bottom the gray goes up the back and then goes along the bottom so we got the right the white done so now we're going to start in on the gray see if we can get that gray line back on there like it's supposed to be and of course this side we got the same thing going on it's starting to come together looking pretty good we painted our first stripe on we did the dark part first so basically we just put some tape on it painted in the dark stripe we're gonna to have to finish the top on its own once we figure out how it looks but basically it should look like that but we get the the dark stripe on and so we're letting it dry and then we're going to paint on the lighter gray stripe and it'll all start coming together pretty good then and this side as well got the dark stripe on it is getting there we also uh, painted the uh, black around the monitor on the inside got it nice and clean looking yeah buddy it's looking good so all of our paints getting done that's our light gray it's not a perfect match but looking pretty good it's getting there putting it back together um, and then of course we're going to trim it out with a black line all the way up it and then we're going to put a little white scoop in the top like it's supposed to have like it has here but definitely getting there it's starting to look like a spy hunter so we put a little black border around it and it's kind of back how it was originally we like it so we had to put t-molding and things like that on it start rebuilding the controls all of that we may have to paint some of the the, the bolts on the front um, but it is coming right along this side's a little nicer than the other side but it's one of those things where your eye is drawn to the middle part anyway and it's still in very nice shape so I think it's going to look very clean and classy whenever we get it all done so uh, we'll pull this sucker out of the back room and get it somewhere where we can get a little bit better look at it but uh, it won't be long now we'll probably finish it up tomorrow okay we're getting down to the end of it people we've moved it over into our showroom to finish it up I think the side art came out pretty nice not perfect but that's all right <laughs> this side came out even a little better not perfect but that's all right looks good uh, we repainted the front and uh, so what we need to do now we've also uh, cleaned up and put the bezel back on what we need to do now is we need to work on the control panel a little bit still we need to put in our marquee and get our marquee light going and that's about it oh we need to clean up the coin door a little bit uh, and that's about it so it's almost ready 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 Freddy 
So the next thing that I think we'll do is we'll start putting this control panel back together so we can get it looking a little better. I'm going to clean the actual panel itself and then we're going to put the button back in and work our way out and get the handles how they're supposed to be again and uh, get that part finished up. All right, that has cleaned up pretty good, people. Pretty good. We never make a mint. So there are, there are nicer ones out there, I'm sure. But we make them, we try to make them reasonably nice. <laughs> so it's reasonably nice. The control panel cleaned up pretty nice. And an interesting thing about the control panel in Spy Hunter is someone figured out years later, whenever they were doing reproductions of it, that that's blacklight ink. So these things actually fluoresce in a black light. But the game was never designed with a black light. But if you have a room that has a, that has a black light, all that stuff will glow. You can see they used a whole bunch of different really intense colors. So it's almost like they designed it thinking that they were going to do a black light. Remember this is an MCR 2 game and the uh, Tron was MCR and it had a black light on it. And uh, wasn't didn't Satan's Hollow have a black light? I might have that wrong, but at least Tron had a black light. So it's almost like they were thinking about rigging up a black light somehow, but abandoned it. So we put our plate back on. Um, of course, it's been repainted, cleaned up. Um, and I'll show you the, uh, basically we're in the button test. So whenever you hit the button, the light on the button comes on, plus the light on the bezel. And then same thing with missiles. And missiles over here. Whoop. And then this left thumb button is your oil slick. And the right thumb button is your smoke screen. That was the one we had problems with, remember? So all the buttons are working. The steering is working as it should. Um, see if the gas pedal's still working. Gas pedal's working. The gear shifter is still working. We're about there, folks. So we've got two things left that I can tell. So our last two things are the monitor needs adjusted. See how it's too high on the screen? You can't read the very top part of it. So we need to adjust the monitor. And we need to fix the marquee light and put on that marquee. Remember how it had the Collins marquee? So we'll adjust the monitor first, and we'll save the marquee for last since it's kind of the, it's kind of the namesake marquee item. You know what I'm saying? That'll kind of make it. Since this, uh, whenever we got the game, it was actually missing that, or it had the wrong one on it. So uh, let's adjust the monitor and see what we can get that to look like. So with it in test mode, you can see what's going on. It's a little too high on the screen. See how you see that white line at the bottom? So that should be gone. That should be off the screen so you can't see it. And then the screen is a little too narrow. It should be a little wider. And then also the screen is a little bit too dark. The, the, the road shouldn't be black like that. It should actually be like a light gray. And the reason that it needs to be like that is so that you can see the oil slick. When you do the oil slick, it's black. So you need to be able to see that on the road. So the road should have like a little bit of a gray uh, look to it. Now we rebuilt this monitor already. It's a Wells Garner K7000 series, which is a very popular monitor. And uh, it's really easy to adjust all of that stuff. So I'm gonna fish that little remote board out and uh, we'll see if we can, if we can uh, get all of that stuff how it should be. So this is what we came up with. Some of this adjusting it is kind of like your own personal preference. Some people might like it brighter, darker, whatever. But we've got it touching all four corners. The road's a slightly gray, so you can see the oil slick. It's not too tall, so none of the text is cut off, if we can get it to show that. Everything's readable. The focus is pretty good. Master of the Sky, people. The Mad Bomber. That little diagonal thing rolling through it, that's just a trick of the camera. My regular eyes don't even see it. I wanted to show that screen with the 10 scores so you can see that it's not too tall. Wrecking them temporarily disables point scoring. Very cool game. 
There we go. So you can see credit. You can see at the top the high score. You can see all the text. So the monitor, in my opinion, is done. Now the only thing left is the marquee. So let's go grab that. I got to get the light to work first, which should just be a new bulb and a new um, a new uh, starter, which we'll twist in. There's the thing where it shows all ten scores. Look at that. Yeah. So I'll go get the bulb and the starter and then we'll put in the piece of glass. So if you watched the first video we did on this Spy Hunter all that time ago, I think we started working on it a few couple months ago and it sat around for a little while. This, uh, it had a marquee like this one. It was a little bigger, of course. Um, but this company, this local company, Collins Coin Video, whenever somebody would break the marquee, or that's what we assume happened, they would replace it with one of these generic ones. So the thing sat there with that generic marquee on it all those years, man. All those years it had the wrong marquee. And of course that's the marquee bracket. Uh, so we took it off. It's laying around here somewhere, but I can't find the thing for the video. And then years ago we bought a whole stack of marquees um, off of a guy that just had a whole bunch of them. And within that stack was this sweet Spy Hunter marquee. Solid glass, people. And it's not in perfect shape, but it looks really good. And it certainly looks better than that. So for whatever reason, years ago, they swapped the, uh, the marquee out for this one. And uh, for whatever reason, years ago, they got this marquee off of another Spy Hunter for some reason. So maybe the thing um, was screwed up. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they parted the thing. Maybe they turned it into another game. Whatever. We saved it all these years, and we now need it. So... Let's go right the wrong, right? Let's see if we can get it to fit on there. It's kind of, it's a good feeling whenever you save something for 10 years and then you finally end up needing it. Let's see if I can put it on there with one hand without dropping it. We're breaking it. Wouldn't that be a heck of a video after I talked it up all that time if I broke the freaking marquee installing it? And then we lay this on top. Same as it ever was. Look at that. Look at that, people. Let's shut the door so we get the whole uh, the whole experience. Right? Looks like a spy hunter, man. Whew. We finished it. Took all that time. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna end the video, because it's already too long, and then we'll film one more complete video showing off the game, and then playing the heck out of it to make sure uh, everybody remembers what that gameplay was like. But uh, we hope you enjoyed the series of us repairing it from screwed up game to completely finished game. And, uh, Leave your comments below. Tell us what you think, how it turned out. Give us a thumbs up for taking all the trouble to film it all for you. I mean, come on. We've been filming this for like weeks for you people. The least you can do is give us a thumbs up, right? Leave your comments below. Make sure to subscribe to us. And uh, we will see you on the next video. Spy Hunter.